Good evening. I just watched Land of Bad in theaters. What is that, you ask? Well, it's a low-budget war movie with Liam Hemsworth and Russell Crowe that just came out of absolute nowhere. And the only reason I heard about it is because I saw the trailer of it in my YouTube history, and it looked kind of scary, and so I started freaking out that my three-year-old saw it because she was watching little kid videos earlier. So to see what it was that somebody watched on my YouTube account, I watched the trailer, and I was like, Hey, that looks really awesome and scary. I really want to see that. And so it just happened to come out today. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to go see that. The kids are kind of in bed. Actually, I think one of them unbedded itself. But anyway, it just seemed the stars seemed to align. I had a free movie ticket and I was like, yeah, let's go watch this thing. So from the preview, I thought it looked really good. But my question was, can this low-budget random movie with the not-as-attractive, not-as-good-to-watch Hemsworth be actually good with, like, old Russell Crowe? And let's see what the answer is. So right off the bat, the movie is has the uniforms of the military correct. They're using correct terminology, and the actors all look and sound and move good. So right off the bat, I was like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm following. I noticed the JTAC patch on the main character Liam Hemsworth's arm. That stands for Joint Terminal Attack Controller. And I was like, no way, this movie's about a JTAC? I guess I didn't realize that from the trailer. But it has some, some like war movie tropes, right? Like where you have kind of the new guy going on a mission that's Liam Hemsworth, Liam Hemsworth with a bunch of Delta Force guys. And, you know, they're like, oh man, is this young kid, can he be trusted? Right, because he's not—he's not one of them. He's—he's he's in the air force, and he's—he controls uh, CAS, which they also used in this movie, which stands for Close Air Support. And I love how they just use terminology in this movie, and just like don't apologize and don't explain it. And I know that might be a turnoff for some people, but for me, it was a turn on. <laughs> um, they use the M. MGRS grid system, the military grid system. So on the radio, when they were calling back uh, grids to stuff, they were actually saying things like November Romeo and then eight digits or something like that. And um, it was really cool. I actually wrote down all the grids and I was looking them up on the MGRS uh, map. They did leave out some initial, some numbers that you need to quite narrow it down, but I, I loved that. I loved that detail. So you see one of the one of the Delta Force guys has a picture of his family, his wife and kids in his helmet. Uh, you might be able to guess <laughs> what happens to that guy. Uh, there's only going to be spoilers in here that are in the trailer. So it's this should be a mostly spoiler free about the same level as the trailer kind of a video. And there's a scene where they're walking through the jungle and talking. There's all like the classic Saving Private Ryan scene after the beach scene when they're all walking through the field, talking about griping. This movie has a scene similar to that where they're walking through and they're kind of jabbing at each other, but you can tell they care for each other. And they're talking about warfare and how technology has removed us from it and made it cleaner and less barbaric. But one of the Delta operators tells the JTAC guy, he's like, like he disagrees. He's like, no, it's barbaric. And he's like, just because you don't look someone in the eye or just look someone, he's like, Dropping a bomb on 50 people is just the same as shooting someone in the head, right? So so they're kind of having this like philosophical conversation. Um, but there was a cool quote that I liked. It says, he said, war comes down to one thing. That's a man killing a man. And that line, as you could imagine, ended up being quite the foreshadowing for the movie. I was actually really, really impressed with the structure of this movie. Um, so basically you have... Um, Russell Crowe's character in Las Vegas at an Air Force base flying a drone in the Philippines. And then you have Liam Hemsworth and team in the Philippines operating. And so the movie had this awesome, awesome juxtaposition between watching a guy in basically an office setting flying a drone dealing with life or death, but still everyone around him is dealing with just like they're watching sports, they're, they're just, they're kind of goofing off. And so you have the office setting juxtaposed with the jungle warfare chase scene, torture, violence setting. And it was it was actually really, really effective because it gave you just a little bit of room to breathe from like the scary violence chase type stuff. But then also it just 
I don't know. I just, I really liked going from the dirty jungle to like a clean grocery store or to the clean office and seeing how some people in the office weren't really respecting the situation because there was like a big basketball game on. One of the Delta operators, so normally you have your magazines across the front of you and one of the Delta operators, I think he had that, but he also had them across the back. And I'm like, could, could you reload quick enough on the back? I don't know. I guess you want to carry a lot of ammo, but I've never seen anyone do that. So quick heads up on uh, this movie. It is rated R. It has quite a bit of violence and a lot of swears in it. And it has your normal mega load of like war violence, like people shooting and little CG or squib blood sprays um, happening. But then there's also some quite brutal violence against brutal and disturbing violence against innocent people. And there's also some torture. So just heads up. This movie has that. I think the trailer pretty much informed you of that already so you should know what you're getting into going into this thing so speaking of russell crowe by the way he did great i mean like liam hemsworth i haven't seen him in too many things but i haven't really enjoyed him in anything i've seen him in he was phenomenal in this i mean it's not like uh, i can't i can't say it's not oscar worthy because i don't respect the oscars so whatever award people get for actually acting and not and not uh other behind the scenes stuff so like, it's not the best acting I've ever seen, but it was the greatest I've seen Liam Hemsworth act. And he did a really good job. I was totally convinced. <laughs> and uh, no matter how brutal it got, the team the team always looked uh, like a bunch of GQ models. Sometimes they were just a little dirty and bloody. <laughs> and I did not mind that at all. I thought it was great. Anyway, Russell Crowe's character, he did great, by the way. Uh, he's, uh, he's flying drones in Las Vegas. And honestly, like, so many things kept coming up in this movie that I've wondered about. Um... Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I've always wondered about the guys who and girls who fly drones in Las Vegas and uh, kill people overseas and then just go home for dinner at night with their families. Like, I've always wondered about that. And so it's so interesting to see a movie portraying it. How accurate is it? I don't know. Um, but Russell Crowe's fourth wife is pregnant. And so he's waiting for a phone call because she's imminently going to deliver and but also he's on this like life or death mission so it's very interesting like the um again just going back and forth between those two worlds there was one part there's quite a lot of like chase type scenes in here and there's one part where liam hemsworth is like running through the water like maybe like 18 inch deep water and the camera person's like running after him and i swear the camera person trips and falls in the water and they just like cut to the next scene and I swear they, they kept that in the movie. Like if you go see it, I I I would bet money if I was a betting man that the, the camera guy fell in the water because the camera's like following him. It's like shaky cam and then all of a sudden it just like goes sideways and slams into the water but he's still going that way. It's not like it's following him. So I think the camera guy totally ate it and I thought that was awesome. Uh, it's always interesting in movies how they handle... Uh, night scenes right like are they gonna just make it green like night vision or are they gonna fake it like do um what do they call it day for night and fake it or what this movie i'm not sure if they actually did this but at one point it was getting dark and you're following around liam's Hem liam hemsworth and it had like a blue tint to it and i don't know if you know this but some night vision instead of being green actually has like a like a blue tint to it and actually on my channel you can see a video uh, that I've, that I have with blue night vision on here. Um, yeah, I don't think I've taken it down yet. I have some green night, green night vision videos, but I also have a blue night vision video of, uh, shooting. So it was cool to see that in a movie. I've never seen that in a movie. And I, I think that's what they were going for. All right. Now I'm no helicopter expert. Um, but I have the two helicopters I'm talking about here are a Huey and a Blackhawk. So there's a part where a helicopter is coming to get people and I swear they show it from some, some angles and it's a black Hawk, like from above. And then when the helicopter shows up, it's a Huey and then they show from above and it's a black Hawk. I might be totally mistaken, but it seemed to me like that was switching, but ultimately it was supposed to be a Huey because that's what they were showing. But I feel like there were some scenes where it was a black Hawk. Anyway, I've actually ridden in both of those and, uh, they're delightful. I know not everybody agrees, but from my perspective, I really enjoy riding in them. Now, one thing that I was expecting to be bad or not like up to par is the special effects, like particularly the CG of like airplanes and missiles and backgrounds and blood and everything. Just kind of expecting like lower quality, right? Because it's a lower budget movie. I think the budget's only like 
$20 million, $25 million. Um, but the effects were great. Like all the airplanes looked convincing enough. The explosions, the blood, uh, the backgrounds, like the CG felt very well incorporated. And it, and honestly, it just felt like there's a ton of like practical effects in this movie. Like there's a part where a truck explodes and it rolls down the hill and the shot's actually amazing. It's, it's, uh, Liam Hemsworth like hiding behind a tree and this truck explodes and it's like rolling down the hill and it, and they're both in frame at the same time amazing shot and I think it it looked practical to me because I swear cars are really easy to tell when they're CG when they're um doing action like other than just normal traffic like when it's rolling down a hill like they look so fake anyway it, I think they did a lot of practical stuff in this movie and it was very refreshing it was like it just like an old school action movie the plot was very very tight and it just moved along and the whole time I was just waiting for it to suck right because all modern movies suck not really but but that's the fear is that you're going to be watching it and there's just going to be something so stupid that happens that just takes you out of the movie and it never happened from beginning all the way through to the end yeah there's a couple war movie tropes where there's like the guy that has the picture of his family and it's like yeah that's we know what's happened to that guy right but it was good i this little random uh war movie with a lowish budget with the lesser hemsworth and there's luke hemsworth as well um it was really good. I was very surprised. Is it super repeatable? Every once in a while, maybe, you know, due to the, like the torture and stuff, it's maybe not the most repeatable, but it was very good. And I highly recommend it if you can handle the stuff that I talked about. If you can't, then just skip it. But I thought it was a really good time. And I think it was like an hour and 50 minutes, five zero. So like, that's a refresh, like movies are so long nowadays. And so just, it was, very well done uh the there's a bad guy and the bad guy did do a little bit of monologuing a little bit of monologuing uh not too bad but there was a part where where the bad guy like goes up to one of the cages that has like a good guy in it and he's like welcome to guantanamo and it's just like okay 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 i get it now i mentioned that that line at the beginning where it's like war is what does he say war comes down to one thing that's a man killing a man you know that something's gonna happen like there's a part where a main person loses their rifle and to me I'm just like ah no go get it but but it's impossible to get it and uh, I just feel anyway it stressed me out but it comes down to literally being naked and alone and having to fight somebody and I, I thought it was awesome like you have people helping each other in that state and then also like fighting bad people in that state and it was very like primal and brutal uh, but I loved it I loved that people were like helping each other in that state, but also like it was just like guy on guy fighting. Oh, that sounded weird. I said fighting. Anyway, so that that line definitely comes true. Like, I don't think that's too much spoiler. Like if you see the movie, you'll see that, but uh, it comes true and you know it's coming, but I, I think it was very effectively done. There's definitely a character arc from like the newish guy who goes through all this stuff and is now, uh, he's not new anymore. Overall, what is it called? Land of Bad. Weird name. And you'll see where the title comes from. It's okay, whatever. Probably could have named it something else. Sure. Um, it was good. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, a good amount of action, good acting, some war tropes that you'll kind of know. The music was good. The effects were good. I, I enjoyed it. I recommend it. I think maybe because the budget is so small it could perform well, but I know a lot of people like uh, nowadays a lot of war movies or like pro-America movies are not very popular, but this movie just felt like an old school just war movie and there's definitely things like when one of the bad guys does uh, one of the really scary disturbing violent things, he says a certain thing that, that's that been said a lot about enemies from enemies of America. I'm not going to repeat it here, but uh, some people will not like that um but it was good it was a good time i'm very surprised i mean i really wanted to see it but i'm impressed so i'm glad that who somebody watched that on my youtube channel so that i could see it in my history and then go watch it to see if it was too scary for my kids which hopefully my kids didn't see it i don't know why it was on my youtube watch history but there it was i saw the trailer and now here i am so let me know if you're gonna see this movie or what you think i tried to keep it relatively uh spoiler free uh so if you want to go see it it sh should be fine anyway 
Let me know what you think, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.